Hey guys, it's Vani from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to review for you the Good and the Beautiful's Mammals Science Unit. If you're new to my channel, I'm a homeschooling mom to three children and I make videos on homeschooling, day in the life, and motherhood. Make sure you check out the playlist for more <coughs> details. So today I want to review for you the Mammal Science Unit from The Good and the Beautiful. We are so excited to receive this. I'm going to show you what it comes with, how to use it, and also show you a link in the card above of us using it as a homeschool day in the life. So here it is. If you are not familiar with the Good and the Beautiful Science, they are K through 8 units, most of them. And in this mammal unit here, you're going to be talking about introduction to mammals, live birth and lactation, odd toed ungulates, even toed ungulates, elephants, primates, felines, canines, monotremes, marsupials, bats, rodents, bears, endangered animals. It tells you that you will need to put together a science journal. In the course, you have lesson mini books, which I'll show you. I have some up on my on my science wall. I like to put them up there to add to the science wall. Makes it look a lot nicer. You also have the mammals of the world map and, act and sticker activity, which I showed you is where that during a lesson, the child's prompted to put a sticker on a specified location where their mammals most commonly found. You have videos in here this time. You have a section where it tells you how to prepare the lesson and then how to prepare your science wall. So for our science wall, we got this big, I don't even know the dimensions on it. I'll have to find it and link it in the description below. Um, this board here. And I usually use tacky, that blue tacky stuff to stick my words up. I always put my vocabulary words up right away so that during the lesson my child will just go ahead and read them. And then I looked like to put some of the mini books up here too. And then I'll put some of the pages that are colorful up there. So let's look into the mini book of platypus. I'll put it with a thumbtack so that you can just see. So these you would cut out and just assemble them together. I just staple them together. Has a lot of information along with some great pictures. What an interesting creature the platypus is, isn't it? Okay, so this is the platypus mini book. And you also have more. So we have the one for felines, we have the one for mammals and lactation, we have the one for primates as well. Then it tells you that these are the optional read aloud book pack that you can buy with this unit. You don't have to, but I think it's a great idea to add them since we're always adding books as homeschoolers anyway. It tells you when to use them, what lessons to use these books. And if you look here, this is Mammal's Small Pond. It's, a, it's um, basically tells you about what the animals in the pond do for the different seasons. You have winter, spring, summer, fall. And it tells you the behavior of the animals during these seasons, how they interact with each other, how they help their environment, like beavers making dams. And it goes through all of the different seasons. Here you have Prairie Town. It's a little story on prairie dogs. And then you have the Can You Track It Mammals. Become a nature detective by learning the tracks and signs of different animals. I really love this book. This is really awesome. It has um, a picture. Oops of a habitat and it says what mammal makes its home here then you can look at like all the details and then the tracks here you can, the kids can guess and then it has some 
questions over here and some facts in the middle about the claws. And then it has, let's say, this home was for a skunk. So then the next page will have information about a skunk. And it does that for different habitats, different tracks, and different mammals. And then this one is mammals from down under. So here you have the Australian Outback. So you have different parts. You have the map. You have the kangaroos that live in Australia. And it has lots of colorful pictures and information about the animals that live in Australia. Wallabies and kangaroos and koala bears and all these adorable animals. And some that are not so adorable. <laughs> So if you have a 7th or 8th grader, there are extension lessons in each, um, in each lesson there's extensions to it. You have uh, optional books that you can read, how their science journal is maybe a little different, <clears throat> how they should be taking notes at this age, and an example of what their journals would be looking like versus though that for your elementary school students wouldn't be as detailed. There's always, uh, before every lesson, it tells you, actually this is a master supplies needed list, so it tells you what you need for every lesson. But then right before every lesson, you also get a little supplies needed section, what you need to do pre to prepare. There's not a lot of preparation, just basically just cutting things out and setting them up. And you have your obje objective for the day, and then you usually have an opening activity. Here we have video and vocabulary word where it prompts the children to watch videos and look up certain vocabulary words. And you have some review questions here. Um, these are the vocabulary words that the kids would put up on the wall or read from the wall. Something for the journaling page. And so if they're elementary students, they have pages in here that go into the journal. Like this one. So if you guys want a sample lesson, Check the video on the card above where I do the lesson one of this of this unit right here that I'm showing you. It tells you things to write on the whiteboard and what you should say. And so now we'll just oh, and then this is a ex example of something that would be used for your seventh and eighth graders that will go into their journal. Actually, fifth through eighth grade. And then this is for grades seven through eighth, the extension of what they would have to do for their project. Okay, so just goes through all the different topics <clears throat> in a similar format. You have different activities here, like milking a cow, bursting milk, so you do have some hands-on things to do here as well. You can pair this up with a trip to the zoo or a trip to a horse ranch when you're learning about horses. We have a lot of trip ideas coming up soon with this unit. We have a lot of animal sanctuaries here in Florida so I put some of the things that are going to be cut out into this plastic, um, these plastic little thingies here, I forget what they're called, so that I can just pull them out and print them out when I need to. So if you guys are interested in this curriculum, I'm going to link it below, but I'm also going to be doing some homeschool with me videos so that you guys can see this lesson being taught by me and done by my students so you can get a deeper understanding if it's something you want to do. Here's a game. You have games in here. And different experiments as well. It also includes poetry and activities that you can just cut out for the kids to do. All the activities are in here, unless it's a lab or some sort of like more hands-on thing, then it'll just tell you what you need and give you instructions on how to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and check out the link in the description below where you can find this unit study 
on thegoodandthebeautiful.com.